Hey, I'm Richard Kind. Don't be alone with Jay Kogan. Hi, people. It's me, Jake Hogan, and it's uh, time once again for Don't Be Alone with Jake Hogan, where I have very interesting people come on and talk about my problems. A lot of great feedback from you people, and I would really appreciate more. So please write to me at dbawjk at gmail.com, and I will answer your, your questions that you have for me there, or you can write questions that we will talk about with our guests. I would appreciate all of that. Please join in, and uh, I, I really uh, created the show so that we would create a community. So I would like to hear from the community, uh, even if the hearing it is, "Hey, do something different." I want to hear that too. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome, and I'm glad you're here today. I'm going to be talking with Richard Kind, the great actor Richard Kind. He's a very funny guy. He's a guy I've known for many years. Very unique character, and people know him. People know of him and know who he is. He's one of the great character actors of our age. Uh, but he's also a good friend and somebody who's very, um, I will say authentic. He's a kind of guy who walks into a room and says something like, I don't like their shirt. Or um, he'll he'll say something like, I heard you just got divorced. Something that you might, we might consider not saying right away. He'll say it and he doesn't get in trouble for it. That's the thing. He's authentic. He says who he is and he says what it's on his mind and people appreciate him for it. For me, I'm afraid if I said something like that, people would hand me my ass or never call me or never talk to me. And I don't want that. I want to be liked. I want to be loved. Uh, and I'm afraid that if I say everything on my mind that I won't be loved. So Richard's going to tell me how he gets away with it. Maybe that will help me figure out how I can get away with it too. Because ultimately, wouldn't it be great to just say what's on your mind? I kind of think it would be, but maybe it wouldn't be. Anyway, we'll talk to Richard, who is, uh, as we say, you, you'll you know him from his work on Mad About You and Curb Your Enthusiasm and Spin City, Bewitched, and The Voice in a Bug's Life and uh, The Cars franchise. And he was also in a, a Serious Man, the Coen Brothers movie. He's done a million things and he's been on Broadway and uh, the producers, uh, you, you'll recognize him immediately. And I know him from uh, many years of playing poker with him and having a lot of mutual friends and he's adorable. You'll like him. So we'll be right back with Richard Kind. Don't be alone with Jay Kogan. I wanted to say that I saved for you. Okay, I appreciate for that. this. That's yes. how much I adore you. Will we be making out later? Because I don't know. <laughs> on one camera. Okay. <laughs> the mic on my good side. All right. I don't want all because, angles because I don't trust the editor. Had I known, <laughs> I would have done a little something with the beard. I don't... Beard burn is an issue <laughs> for uh, for the gals, for the gals, the <laughs> ladies. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for being here. Richard Kind. TV's yes. Richard Kind. Uh, yeah, right. TV's and movies, Richard Kind. And I like to say plays, and, too. And I run, I run theater, all. but, you know. Mel Brooks' granddaughter yes. wants to do a documentary about me. Okay. Great. Okay. That's great. No, that's not great. Why not? Doesn't mean you're. It's a little self-referential. If right. I even say yes to it, it right. means, hey, look at me, look at me, look what I've done. Kaminsky, what? Who? Which? Which granddaughter? Which? Which? No, uh, no. Her name is Samantha Brooks. Brooks. Okay. But so it's, not, uh, it's not. It's uh, not. Uh, it's Susie Watts' a stepsister be okay. because I think it's from the first marriage. All right. Um, but she's very funny. Yes. And uh, her boyfriend's very funny. And then uh, also. Uh, somebody's involved who, um, I, you know, I don't know how much I want to talk about them, right. it, whatever, but he happens to be from comedy. So the third party happens to be related to comedy royalty. That's right. Uh, our comedy royalty. Okay. Not, not the right. Hollywood, a master. And I'll tell you after, because I don't know whether I want, want to say it on, on air. All right. Well, I mean, unless, unless, we're, unless, we're on unless, air right, assume we're on air right now. Yeah, because you can't edit it. Well, we can. You can. It's not so, so I could say it, but you can, I don't. Can, I can start at any time. I can say we're starting now. I know, but I know we're starting now, but you're not going to edit the name. We can edit I it say out. That. I know you can, but I can't trust you. I'm okay. kidding. I'm kidding. Or or they could read my lips. They can read anyway, l l l they, well, they, hold, they, let's uh, talk about me. So they want to do this thing. Yes. Right. And we shot a sizzle reel. And I said, look, if we can make it funny. Right and give it a, some sort of a twist, a hook, something that's different. And they found it. Oh, great. They found it, and it's great. Good. It's a great idea. Okay. I may need your suggestions, advice. Happy to do it. 
when we're finished. All right, I'm happy it's to do very, it. Very, very funny. I'm, uh, you'll uh, you'll get a kick out of what it is. I, I'll tell you something right away. Already, yes. Something. First of all, Richard Kind. I, I've already given you an introduction. You haven't seen it, but I've already given you an introduction about how much, oh. how talented you are, how many things you've done, and how much I love you. But, but please let me but, hear it. I'm kidding. Go let's <laughs> talk more about the reason you're here. Yeah, the main reason you're here uh -huh. is. I talk about things that are on my mind and things that right. bother me. The show is about is don't be alone with Jake Hogan, and it's it's about issues I'm having, and I seek the help of people who I think have a good handle on this particular issue. And for you, I wanted to talk about authenticity because you're one of the most authentic guys I know. You speak your mind, really. You stay. You say stuff. Sometimes you put your foot in it, but you say stuff. I do. So you say stuff that's on your mind. You I are do. authentically I, Richard Kind. I, I am not good at editing. Right. You are correct. You are. You are Richard Kind. And one of the things about your career is, you're Richard Kind. Like in other words, you know, you you're an actor and you inhabit characters, but a lot of it's you, and a lot of it's it, that's very true. Right. I I agree with you. Okay. Somebody like Daniel Day Lewis. Here's Daniel Day Lewis. Right. Here's the character. They never meet. You don't That's know right. what the hell. Do me a favor. Is there any way? Because I can see me on that screen. Either turn the screen. Uh, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah, I'm, I'm radio. Sure. I can see a radio and right. I go, oh, I right. know that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for interrupting everything. That's good. That's fine. I can't edit that out. But I have out. to. But it's I me. I can't edit that out. But I know. It's that's me. the problem. That so is are, me. You're, I'm, you're I'm authentically you. I'm upset about that. Right. So move it. Right. That's fine. What, and you're wait, saying, why would, should I sit here <laughs> having to look at me? You shouldn't. Every time I look at me you, on screen, you know I go, who else? What, what, what have you chosen? What profession right. have you, you know chosen? You know who else screams about the camera off to the side? Daniel Day-Lewis. <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis would sit there and say, What the hell is that camera doing? Like, I don't need to see myself. But he'd say it in the voice of Abraham Lincoln. Right. Okay. So that's what that that's what these right. guys do. Right. De, De Niro, yeah. all of those. I do meet the character halfway. Yeah. I get there uh, my mouth I can't move and, my mouth any and, differently. And I think you're cast than this. because of who you are a well, lot of the time. When we're finished with yes. this, okay. I'm gonna send you something. All right. Then okay, it's uh, it's me a little bit. Here, I'm taking out money because I don't like to have you it. You don't have to pay pockets. me now. <laughs> pay me later. A, a thing called Hitman, based yep. on, uh, you know who Lawrence Block is, the mystery writer? No. Great mystery writer. Yep. You, from the uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, mm -hmm. uh, primarily. Brilliant, brilliant guy. Uh, uh, but pulp fiction type of, of mystery stories. I shouldn't say that. I think he wrote um, To Live and Die Alone. No, he wrote... Uh, Okay, okay. Anyway, he's a great radio. Rose so far, here. just so you know, Richard, so far, all of this is cut out. Every single thing. There's <laughs> well, nothing you said once so Once I start getting interesting, <laughs> we're going we're right to go right back in. But so far, everything has been cut out. So, uh, Lars Bach wrote a series of books called Hitman. Yes. About a hitman who lives in New York, could look like me, right. walk down the street, you wouldn't, he doesn't look right. so tough. And sure. He, and he, like a mechanic, will fix a um, car or a plumber mm -hmm. will fix plumbing. This is his this, job. That's his job. I know. And it's uh, he's very amoral about it. He just understands if he doesn't do it, somebody right. else will. It's yeah. a wonderful series of books. Mm -hmm. I think Jeff Bridges had the rights to it. Ah. They elapsed. Okay. Then I found out George Clooney had the rights to right. them. I didn't even know. Okay. And he's a good friend of mine. Yes, he is. And he, those laps. Uh -huh. So nobody was going to make it. Elias, who was not, it was a wonderful director and writer, but that's not his profession. But he loves doing it. Uh, talked to me about what are my favorite movies. We talked about Chinatown. I think it's a perfect script. He wrote a detective story for me. Right. About a, it was a 20 minute, 20 to 30 minute uh, short film with the hopes of making a TV series. Right. It was a very good short film, played the festivals, got a lot of awards, but it wasn't going to go anywhere. But he used that to show to Lawrence Block and he got the rights for free, I think, to make Hitman Fabulous. with me because right. Lawrence Block liked my performance right. and he thought that Elias was a good filmmaker. Right. We're, we're in talks to do that as a series. And okay. I We've been here for, done. I don't know, two minutes. You've already talked about how good your performance was somewhere. Somebody so, has to. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that one of our poker games, but, one, of, one of the things of our poker game is imitations. You're well imitated by everyone. And when I was a, I was a wonderful Harold Hill. Right. Okay. Right. But I will tell you when I'm not good. Maybe. I, like you say, right. I am transparent, authentic. authentic. 
But but I don't think you're often not good. So so that's that's oh there eh, are times. I'm of course there of course there. You times. should see me on the golf course. I when I hit a great shot. How? Wow. Yes. Oh my gosh! Look at that shot. Right. I, I don't care where it ends up. I hit it properly. You'll hear me. Some most people. God damn it! Right. God, they they scream at each other. Yeah. I do the same thing. Again, you know, I don't do that. But I go ah gee. But when I hit a good shot, right. You're gonna hear right. it. Right. Applause should be heard and boos should be heard. And I'm going to say two things. One is, congratulations. I hope this thing becomes, I would love to see you yeah. be a hitman. Yes, okay. Uh, you'd be a great hitman. I'm writing something kind of similar right now. Not about a hitman, but just about a guy whose job it is to be a, a fucking mobster. And he is, he is, he, it's not a guy you'd think would be a mobster. Is it a comedy? No. Mine neither. Yeah. Well, well you got to see mine and, yeah. and you know, okay. Uh, because but should you see it? Sure, I would absolutely say. I, I was in a movie. I was in a movie called Cold Blooded, where Jason Priestley was a hitman, an un, un, unlikely, unlikely hitman. Unlikely hitman. Yes. Okay. And I was killed. I was shot in the head by Jason Priestley. Oh, okay. It was. It was one of my. It's my finest role. <laughs> my finest role. Did you have? Did you have many lines? I had not many lines, but enough. And I got shot and killed in the movie, and I do it well. I love and that's that. very hard. Okay. But here's the reason why I'm talking to you about authenticity mm -hmm. and about Richard Kind's authenticity is because I don't think I have that bravery to be as authentic as you are. And that's why you're here. You're okay. here to discuss why, how you have the wherewithal, and I know it's part of it. nature, but it's also just who you are to just be able to say whatever you're thinking and know you're not hurting people's feelings. That's and very true. Very yeah. true. Okay, I, I will tell you because I thought about this because yeah. you, you you said that that's what it was, but you didn't use the word authenticity or authentic, which is a very nice compliment. But this is this is the thing: I am an actor with a huge ego and no self confidence. No self confidence. I, I don't have much self confidence, okay. but I have a huge ego. Mm -hmm. I get scared whenever I'm going to do anything. Right. But that ego. When I am giving an opinion, I'm right. Right. And I will sing it to the stars. So how is that not self-confidence? It's ego. I just say okay. it's, it's, right. it's, it's right. ego. Let, we're, we're playing. Let's, let's talk about Lisa uh, okay. uh, Kudrow, yes. who I saw yesterday. Lisa will be a guest on this show. You could talk to her about okay. this thing. She is quote unquote famously, has a, there's a thing on YouTube where she gives a graduation speech. Yes. And she talks about me. Mm -hmm. And when she lost that role on Frasier, on the pilot of Frasier, mm -hmm. was replaced. Right. Supposedly, and I, I, I don't exactly remember it, but I can see me saying this. How do you get up in the morning? <laughs> After losing <laughs> that role, how do you go out and, and face it? I don't understand. That's horrible. That's horrible. You think so too? Yes. She doesn't take it like that. I, okay. What I meant was... Right. Look, and, and this is how she took it. Right. And it must have been at the time. Okay. Because I haven't seen it. Right. God bless you for having the strength to know how good you are, that you can get up in the morning and be strong and know I did not fail. I, they just didn't want me for this. Right. That's but that's not what you said. That's but, not what you said. That's but not, I know that she understood but it. But at the time, yes. that's how she took it. Right. And I believe, as you right. said. Right. That's how you meant it. That's what I, I may have said it. That's why I don't like texts. That's why I don't like emails. I right. still like the telephone. Right. You can hear in my voice mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Right. And I'm right. saying, my gosh, I'm I'm so sorry. I don't I don't know how you can right. get up in the morning. That must be so difficult. And and but but you know how talented you are. Right. Here's something else that I remember telling her. She had guessed it on Mad About You. I was on at the oh, time. Sure. It was before Friends. Yep. And I said, and she was going to go on Conan's show, who she knew very well, mm -hmm. playing a part. And she didn't know whether she should do it. Mm -hmm. And I said, no. When you go on Conan's show, you go on as Lisa Kudrow. If they want to use That's that character's name being Lisa Kudrow, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But I think she was going to be a waitress right. or something like that. I said, no. Right. Go on as Lisa Kudrow. That's great advice. I know. That's great it's advice. My, it's great advice. That's great advice. That's my opinion. That's great advice. But 
so one is bad advice or, or, or one is a bad statement, one's a good advice. They're all out there. That's what I do. I know, but I'm saying that that particular thing is, is, is beautiful and great advice. If you if I had a failure, and I have had many failures, and mm -hmm. you say to me, how do you get up in the morning? I don't know that I would see, that I would hear all the brave stuff of men, how great you are and all that kind of stuff built into it. But you knew Lisa would hear it that way. And I- Okay, I'm gonna go through a list. Right. I was thinking of something, yeah. but now here's a worse okay. one. This okay. is a horrible Tell one. Tell me the worst thing. This is horrible. Okay, horrible. But I still don't think it's horrible. All right, but tell me. Hank tells, reminds me this story. Right. Uh, Kristen Johnston, great actress, mm -hmm. brand new, uh, the acting and everything like that right. is being represented, I think maybe by Hank's manager or we go out with her manager. I remember we were downstairs, we were at Joe Allen's. Uh, Hank was there, myself, and I think her manager or maybe Hank's manager. There's a LA. lot of managers at this meal. Okay, it could have been Hank's or it could have been hers. <laughs> okay. We're at the table yeah. and she's saying she's going out to LA. I go, you're gonna do great in LA. You're gonna do fantastic because you're so beautiful and you're so talented, but you're not a typical beauty. Okay. I think that's okay too. Yeah. It's like you're beautiful, but you're not. See, you're no, not I the, hear the, that as a, an actual compliment. I hear that too. as a compliment. But every They woman, took it as, oh my God. Right. Or, uh, you, you know, you're, you're so pretty, but you're not that typical pretty. Well, first of all, she's seven feet tall. That doesn't, I didn't mean that. She could she do nothing of course, about that. But she knows, she, every woman is, is fraught with their own absolutely extra insecurities absolutely. even more than we and so when you say you're not a typical beauty what they hear is ugly that's correct right and that's what everybody at the table that's heard. right and right. I, I'm I, like I'm saying I'm going you are you're so good you're 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 a you're, you're a character actress but you're, you're a leading act but right. you're not you're not the typical beauty right. that we would say taken as an insult okay <laughs> all right but let me but stop let me stop you okay let's go back let's dig deeper into this so you have this thing to say you say this to Kristen and everybody at the table do they react immediately or immediately they, okay immediately and they start <laughs> screaming at you saying, screaming. And, you're, and you're saying like I didn't mean it that way I meant it the good way and then uh, how do you get out I backpedal I backpedal okay, I, so I, I I'm right okay I am right. Right. But even though you're right, you're going to backpedal. Because she's hurt. Right. I of only course. backpedal because she's hurt. Right. But I am was right. All right. Okay. And it came to fruition. Yes. It absolutely did. No, she's okay. very good. Now, the reason why I, I, why I like all of this stuff yeah. is because I go to a therapist mostly on how to be a good father and how to deal with my kids. Yeah. And then we delve into me and then... Mm -hmm. but. I tend to be a father who likes to give advice and learn a lesson. And here's the moral. Mm -hmm. My kids don't read my texts anymore. Right. The minute I start on it, they, Dad, stop. Right. And my therapist says, let them be. Right. They will get there. They might make mistakes. They will there. make mistakes. So for instance, my daughter, because of COVID and because of situations, will never live in a dormitory at college. Okay. That's heartbreaking to me. All right. Because I think every kid who goes to college should live in a dorm. Where is she going to college? Well, she went to Northwestern, mm -hmm. but her first year, she was not there. Okay. She was in North Carolina right. in an apartment, right. never stepped foot on campus. Right. When she became a sophomore, she lived in a dorm right. in a single, and I don't don't get me started on that. <laughs> okay, and she left after her, her the first semester because she just needed to take that year off. Okay, she went back. She she didn't like Northwestern, transferred to American in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. and got an apartment. Okay, you know who went to college and never lived in a dorm? Jay Kogan. Well, let's wh never lived in a dorm. Why? Why? I, I went to UCLA because I wanted to be home? I wanted to be an actor and right. uh, and in and, and, and stuff and I lived too close to the campus. UCLA right. said we're not giving you a dorm. Your your ho your house is five miles from campus. We the dorm is for people who don't have places to live, and so I never got one. They told you you weren't. Yeah, they wouldn't allow me. I wanted to live in a dorm. I wanted that experience you're talking about, and I didn't. I couldn't That's get it. That's awful. Yes. 
Well, but you know. And you, you could have paid for it. Your parents would have paid for the dorm. Yeah, they went up paying for an apartment separately nearby. Yes, but. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. But, I th you, but you regret not having a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, I know. You don't know don't and you know. turned out fine. It's fine. Everything. It's fine. My daughter will turn out right. fine. The main, the main thing I want to say, though, about all this stuff is you don't need to have regret for her if she doesn't have regret. In other words. That's what my therapist you don't says. Need to, but it's, but so, it's or, so or obvious. Here's how she put it. Your experience yeah. is not her experience. Absolutely. And if my son stays in on a Saturday night or doesn't like parties as much, he says ah, he doesn't love them like he. he right. I mean, he goes out and he's right. a good-looking kid. Everything right. he's successful with the you know with friends, many friends. But I'll call him on a Saturday night. He hasn't gone out. I go, Max, why didn't you go? Let him be. He didn't want to go out. He, right. Parties. He can't talk at parties. They're too loud. I, I'm with like him. Them. I'm with I know. Him. I'm not. No, I know. <laughs> and I got the voice to prove right, it. Because, I understand. But I'm still filled with advice. Now, can you can you just yes? If I'm I'm pretend I'm Skyler. Pretend I'm I'm, I'm dad. Mm -hmm. I uh, I just I turn in a report, and I got a I got a I got a C, and I really wanted an A, and it's just really I really I tried really hard oh and i that's that's perfection to and, me and and oh i don't i don't give a goddamn okay do you give advice after that or just sit with no. her with her feelings no i congratulate her i said you tried as hard as you could right that is then then i but raised back you up well one step okay she's sad can you be sad with her for a second and say like i i i hear what you're saying and I understand what you're feeling, but let me then tell you how proud yeah, I am. Yeah, I'll say, gosh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You tried so hard. I'm sorry you got to see. Yeah. You really wanted to do well. I'm sorry. That, but, but that's I love. The that moment, yes. that moment of connection, can, that's everything. I can absolutely do that. Yes. But the thing is, is that there are other things yeah. where I'll, I just always give advice. Okay, now in the shower today, thinking about what I was going to say, I've got examples of my hubris, not hubris, but my elevations of opinion. Sure. And I will say this, not a time that we didn't play poker where you didn't criticize somebody's playing. You say, how'd you go in with that? Yes. You would, you, you would sh shout your opinion about the whether you win or whether you lose. And now I'm wrong. And now I'm wrong. I will admit that I'm wrong. No, it's not wrong. It, that's part of your charm. It and is, again, it is. That, I where wouldn't, would you, yes, I wouldn't would you sit go? with 40 other people who would do that, but I would sit with you. And that's, this is what I'm saying is, you, is, yes, is yeah. you have this thing. And I, I think if I really spoke my mind, if I truly said to everybody, you know, that that shirt doesn't look good on you or <laughs> uh, I would say that I have a I doll. Didn't... I have a doll here made by our friend Stephen yes, Weber. Yes. And for someone who works out, you don't look that to good. Greg, I remember right? saying that. OK, yeah. this is these are things that you've said. Okay, this is, yeah. this is this is a doll. Your friends made this doll. Your friend made this doll. Okay, that's how authentic you are. You have a doll that says kind of insulting things. I know, but, but it's not. I know. You know, I but know. you know, and you don't mean it. You have the kindest heart, but you are willing to say this stuff on your mind, and you've spent what must be a lifetime getting away with it. I have. Okay, so I have. now then, give me that secret. What is that? But secret? I want to give you three other okay, examples. Give me more examples. Fine. That have, are not personal. All right. I remember when S Arnold Schwarzenegger came out with a poster years ago. Mm -hmm. And he goes, this, this poster will be bigger than Farrah Fawcett's, which was the biggest thing right. at the time. And my reaction was, what an idiot. What a fucked up idiot that he's going to be like that. Yeah. Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger went on to be right. one of the biggest movie sure. stars of all time, mm -hmm. married a Kennedy, right. Right. and became governor of California. Right. But how did the poster sell? It does, it, that, that, that's a, <laughs> I'm an right. idiot. Okay, no, no, you're entitled to your opinion, and we're all that's wrong. That's my opinion, but I'll say it aloud. Yeah. Being right or being wrong isn't really the point, because we're all gonna be right and gonna be wrong. But I say it, I say it aloud. Yeah. How do I do it? I think it's my, I think it's my ego. Yeah. I think it's I think it's my ego. Okay. So, I have, what, I, so I, how did you grow up? Who gave you that ego that said, "Hey, oh, you know what? I got uh, I got things to say and people want to hear it." And you want to know something? I know that you 
don't say everything you want to. I've I've seen you not say stuff. Yes, <laughs> I've heard you stop yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've seen you. Did it? But did it hurt you that I stopped myself, or did you think, oh, I, I wonder what he was going to say and how horrible that would have been? No. In thinking back on yeah. it, I, and I haven't seen you in years, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking of those things. Some people might call it polite. Mm -hmm. Some might call it um, non-intrusive. Scared. Now, I don't want to hurt people's feelings. I never, I never think of you as All right. scared. All right. I think of you as, yeah, let it out. Le I'm Leo Bloom. Right. <laughs> I'm Leo Bloom. Right, right. That's what it is. Okay. I'm Max Bialystok. I'm more... My son saw producers, right. uh, the, the original, and right. texted me. Have you seen it before? But he saw it again. He goes, "You are Max Bialystok. Right. I'm loud. I this is what I do. Right. I do do that. And you do, absolutely do. Yeah. And, and and that's and I guess do I wear it as a badge you, of pride? Well, I'm 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 sometimes embarrassed about it and will laugh about yeah. it. But I never think I'm wrong. And you don't change. You don't, you're not saying I should change. You're saying like, this is who I am. Again, I am Leo Blue. I'm, I'm Max Bialy stuff. Well, nowadays with the Me Too things, yes. I have to stop myself a little bit. Okay. Well, that's, that's a fair. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember what one of the... F well, I'm not going to tell the Yeah, don't tell me. If you get something, I you can't... I want to tell you know, the story. You Spend, you know, yes, you I can, because it's a funny story. You can story. cut it out later if you don't like it, but the you, thing is- No, 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 you'll judge whether I should do it. All right. And I won't mention it, but this, right. is a, this is one of the funniest things I've ever said. All right. I don't know whether I'll say it today, okay. but I will relate it mm -hmm. in the fashion that this is something that I don't know whether I would say today, but God damn, it was funny. I, I have a million of those, yes. It's Luck, okay, remember Luck on, on uh, sure. HBO? Mm -hmm. Dustin Hoffman's in the room, Dennis Farina, Nick Nolte, Michael Mann is in the room. Mostly men, a few women, not many, uh, getting our the sex talk by the lawyer. Mm -hmm. This is what you're allowed to do. Right. This is back in the day. Right. So this is years ago. Right. Very attractive woman comes in, dressed, nice business suit, skirt, every beautiful, gives about an hour and a half. Right. When she's finished, she goes out of the room, door shut. And I said, hands up, you wanted to fuck her. Which I think is one of the funniest things good. I'll ever say. I thought say. you were going to say, if she says at the end, any questions, you should say, I didn't hear. I was just looking at your tits. <laughs> That's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> well, yours is good. The same because idea. so good. Same, the same idea. idea. Same idea. But I loved the terseness yes. of, hands up, you wanted to fuck her. Right. Yes. It's a very funny. I would probably not say that today. Well, it depends on who's in the room, probably. I am the whole point about that joke is, obviously, it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. And the reason why it's funny is how crazy inappropriate it would be if you actually felt that way. And instead of just, you listen to this thing. And right. So, like, it's a reaction to having to sit for an hour and a half, yeah. hearing, you know, an this, HR this. person do all that kind of stuff. Right. But in today's world, the intention of the joke no longer matters. That's correct. It's now that who can hear it and be insulted by it. Or oh, be offended that's sort by of a shame, but yeah. That's why I no um, longer tell uh, small Asian boys. Uh, <laughs> well, that doesn't doesn't matter anyway. After we cut, I want to yeah. hear what the punchline is okay. because I'm I have sure. one. You yeah. know, I got them in my head, but I don't right. know. Okay, so uh, I think that I'm a little more self censoring, but I don't want to be. Okay, it's that's because of society, not because of wisdom of age, of time, of things over time no. that you've heard. It's not uh, marriage has and and my therapist through the, with the kids, mm -hmm. but marriage has that point that you said. Just listen to, to them and right. say, "I know, I understand, right. I understand." I with everybody will try and give advice. Right, and also, where my, did you get? Where did you get Michael, the idea? Michael Michael Boatman, uh -huh. who's now going through. Uh, problems, you know, at, at home and stuff like that. Uh, I give him advice, 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 mm -hmm. advice. He calls me Talmudic. And I think that I am. Yeah. I think that my armchair quarterbacking is pretty <laughs> great. All right. So I will not stop. Should we get Michael Boatman on the show to talk about his problems? Should we get him there? Michael Boatman has problems. Okay. Where he will tell a stranger <laughs> his problems. Okay. And they're the same words he uses with me. Okay. It's as if they are rehearsed. He has been saying to his therapist, to right. his friends, and now will tell, uh, because he's got these right. words that, that, that sum up but his But you problem. never answered my question. My question was, who, who, was it my mother? Where do you come to 
the ego where you think your advice has the value that you can shout it across the room at people and yeah. people should hear it. I wish I could say it was my mom who... Did people is, in your life do, do that? Did you, was there an example of somebody who gave you a lot of advice? My dad you? gave my dad gave me lots and lots and lots of advice. Okay, so the, so you equate fatherhood? He, 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 he did, but I don't think that I don't think. Did you I, like his advice? Yeah, but it wasn't until we were driving one day. I was it must have been in college or maybe even after college. He said something to the effect of, "Oh, you're a much better person than I was at your age." That's you are, nice. You are, I tell my son that all the what time. What a great thing to hear. Yeah, he, he, he absolutely. Mm -hmm. But my dad, my dad, okay, this is therapy stuff. Yeah. But my dad used to be lying there in, in bed, you know, watching TV. The commercial would come and he'd go, come here, son, and give, give, your, give your dad a hug. And I would put my head on his chest and he would hug me. And I, if given the chance, I would start to sob. I would well up. Because you're because so full of love or so full of sadness? What was the tear? Where were the tears? No, no, no. Absolute love. Love, love, love. Okay. But he he only did that during the commercials. I see. You wanted more of that. I guess. Was he a jeweler? What was he? Yeah, he, he, he owned a, a jewelry store. Right, okay. Okay. Well, part of it, I think, comes from, you know, it, owning a jewelry store, he said, there is never a sad occasion for jewelry. <laughs> okay. All right. But it's true. Yeah. All right, you you know they're, they're, people don't give people don't give uh, uh, jewelry on a bad occasion. On a, on a, there's, there's nothing. There's no funeral bad. bracelet. Right. There's no okay. bad. Uh, Richard, and, yeah. Have we just discovered a market? Hold on a second. What do you mean? A market. You mean you want funeral bracelets? With funeral bracelets. Yeah. Come, funeral come necklace. To our place. Funeral. <laughs> holy black shit. Carpeting. We'll black make a fucking <laughs> mint. Are you kidding? Everybody has to have a black onyx <laughs> necklace when they walk into a funeral. Otherwise, they're not really sad. So he. So he said. He said. He, my he gave dad, you jewelry advice. My dad was the only Jew in Princeton. Princeton's a very right. goyish town. Mm -hmm. Very wealthy. Yeah. And. My dad, everybody knew Sam Kind. He was king, but none of them were Jews. Right. He used to go to the country club where he was. He was allowed. Or, we, but, the, but our country club was a Jewish country. He was a big mocker there. Yeah. He, no, but, but he wasn't allowed at the Princeton but, country club. Oh, certainly not. And <laughs> okay. so, how many of so them, how many of them were let's friends? Let's talk about what King of Princeton means. <laughs> let's no, hear, let's no, stop no. that. King of Princeton means King he had of no the friends. Jewish. I, yes, you're, you're right. He had no friends in Princeton. Right. We never used to go, hey, let's go to their house. Right. Everybody. Never. But everybody knew Sam Kind. Right. Would There's the Jew we won't let in our house. Look. But it's true. <laughs> I know. It's true. Okay, but well. he but he owned Prince. Everybody knew right. him. Everybody loved him. Enough. That they did. Yes. Can I tell you something? Okay. That's how I live my life. All right. I really ask myself too, and this yeah. is an embarrassing okay. thing. They're going to have this on tape All and right. on film and everything. All right. Good thing is no one watches my show, <laughs> so thank God. Yeah, I don't know how anybody could not like me. All right, <laughs> I can see that. That that I know there are people who don't like true. me, and that, probably right. for what I just said. Right. No, but but it's interesting because you do walk through the world that way. You walk through the world as though I don't see how anyone could not like you. You're absolutely and I love that about right. you that and, is and that confidence whatever that is serves you so well I if I could stride into a room thinking everybody here is gonna like me we were at a, a big thing yesterday and I walked into that room and I had trepidation about walking into that room I've talked about that on, on the show that, like it, this before what, what get, get to, to tell me and let, let me see if no, I can respond. I'm gonna see people either I'm gonna see strangers or I'm gonna see people I know either way I don't know. But isn't a stranger a magnificent person? <laughs> but, okay, maybe. But no, Jay. But I don't know. Isn't that what the world's all about? I love going. Well, I, I love going to okay. towns, right. meeting people, go, going to a bar. Listen. But I love it when they go, oh, I loved you. I'm blah, blah, blah. And right. then I'll just start this a conversation. This was a sad occasion, so I didn't know. It wasn't going to be a party. But I'm talking I, about a regular yeah, night okay. yesterday, any yeah. day. Okay. Why is walking into a room not... A, a, a celebration of people look who don't I'm gonna have love. the the inner you know the inner strength that you have that says everybody's going to like me it's going to be fine if I think or that you I'm can not find gonna... out about somebody no I, I listen I eventually get there and I like talking to people and finding out about yeah, them you know that but, you but, do but 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 mm -hmm. there's a moment in time you walk through a door and you see people and then you go like okay well and there's people 
There are people who, there who, here's here's something. There are people at that place that we were at yesterday, which was a memorial for a friend of ours, who um, who I haven't seen for years. Me too, because okay, I, I haven't seen for years, and I wonder, like, why haven't I seen them for years? Maybe they don't like me. Maybe there's a reason why I've been distanced from that group. There's a bunch of people in that world. And Matt, this is Matthew Perry's memorial. Matthew Perry was one of those people I was a little bit distant from for many years Me because too. of who, yeah. what, what he was going on in his life. And he had a group of friends who I'm also didn't hang out with because they're in that world and I'm in my world. And so I think, well, am I invited back in that world? How, how do I? I always think it's my fault. Yeah. Why haven't I called them? Yeah. I really, I in your case it is. Yeah. You, didn't call, you don't call people. Very hard. You want to know something yes. with Matthew? Yes. Because I knew him at such a young age, yeah. I gave him advice all the fucking time. Right. Yeah. And he could buy and sell me six ways from Sunday. <laughs> he was more successful in right. everything he did right. than any advice I gave him, yet I still gave him. Right. And, I, and, I, and I'm talking on everything. Yeah. I'm talking women. I'm talking the career. I'm talking... The drugs and the drinking. I gave him advice of all. I will say that Matthew seemed like a boy, even well into his fifties. Yes, like he seemed like a, a boy that's who right. needed advice. I know, and that's and that's yeah. how I saw yeah. him at first, right? And how I continued to see him. Yeah, made me too. Yeah, uh, you know, you haven't given me a ton of advice in my life. You haven't given me a ton of advice, and I wonder why. Do I project something that says I don't need advice or I won't listen to your advice? If I could give you advice right now. Yeah, what's the advice? You're not going to like it. It's going to sound mean. That's Say it. Because I love you. Yes. And I worry about you. Yeah. I worry about your weight. I should gain more weight? This is ridiculous, <laughs> Richard. I'm already too heavy. You might as well be what happy. Are you, what are you, you know, fucking talking about? It's not going to last that much longer. I've like, recently I, lost like 60 pounds. I was going to say, I saw you yesterday yeah. and I said, you look terrific. Yes. I always, that's what I was that's what I okay, should have well, said. I saw you at a card card right. game. Yeah. And I gasped. Okay. And I kept my mouth shut because right. it's like saying, well, you don't know it. I go, right. you know, so so well, that's so, the thing. Like yeah. like if you're if you're extremely overweight, right. you absolutely you, you, you know absolutely, you're extremely yeah, overweight. You have to shower. And you know that you have right. to lose weight. Yeah. I am so happy that I didn't have to say it. And all I wanted to say was I love you live longer. Okay. There are ways to live longer. Mm -hmm. And I, I, but you had to have known it. And right. Well, what was it? What would you have? What would have been your weight loss advice? What would the advice you could, so you sat me down? It's just you and me. Said, Jay, you got to lose weight. And here's what you. Here's what you I should would, do. I would say, here's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Jay, I've been dieting since fourth grade. Mm -hmm. I know how hard it is. Right. You've been this weight for many years now. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, it feels great when you lose it. It feels great. Sure. And not only does it feel great, you're gonna live a long time. It has felt and, great. Every and, time I've lost hundreds of pounds, it has yeah, always felt right, great. Right, right, right. Yeah. But not only for, for you, but for your son. You gotta lose weight for your son, because he wants you there. So you think the motivation wasn't there. You think if, I, if you just told me, hey, you know, your son would like you to live a long life, you should do it for him. And your friends. And your friends, you should do it for them. For them. Okay, that's bad advice. I know. <laughs> I don't think people lose weight. If people have an addiction to something, food or whatever, like Matthew Perry, you can say, hey, you gotta stop uh, your we, thing. We, for we, we, we love you, we do not right. wanna lose you. Right. But then I would then say, and Jay, when you take the weight off, yes. that's the easy part. Right. Keeping it off. Is the hard part. That's really, mm -hmm. really hard. All right. So I'm asking you to lose weight. Yes. But I'm telling you, the hard part you haven't even confronted yet. Okay. Well, the thing is, I've lost, I've lost hundreds of pounds, and I've had we difficulty. All have. We are no, but literally, like in a, in one fell swoop, like I've lost a hundred pounds and then been thinner, and then impossible to keep the, the weight. Impossible. Down. Yeah. That's because you lost a hundred pounds yeah. in one fell swoop. Yeah. You should lose two pounds a month. Yeah. Three pounds a month. Yeah. It, it stays off for longer. And let me tell you this. Mm -hmm. James Coco and somebody else. We were just talking about it the other day. Dom DeLuise? I think it might have been Dom DeLuise. I don't know. You're, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to go down my list of fat people. No, Jackie no, no. Gleason? I, 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 know, I know it was, I know for sure it was James Coco. Okay. Uh, lost a lot of weight and then put it back on. And the heart can't take that. Right. 
So, so it may be so, more dangerous to lose weight than to not lose weight. Sometimes I don't, <laughs> I, it's true. So maybe you're killing me with this weight loss stuff. <laughs> Richard. Sometimes my advice is wrong, but I got, <laughs> but I got the ego to say right. it. No, no, I'm but not. I noticed, trust no. me, I noticed yesterday. Of course I noticed yesterday. Yes. No, it goes in, but obviously the person with the problem, if I'm the person with the problem, in this case mm -hmm. I am, I know I've spent my lifetime considering the problem and trying to work on the problem in different, in many, many different and varied ways. And sometimes the problem's genetic as well as emotional as well as I, a habit friend, it's a nature friend of mine once said and nurture you're that overweight it's not because it's because you're hungry right nobody can eat that much to, to be that that right. much so there's a lot of yeah. things going on of course we suppress our feelings right. of course you eat for feeling? Uh, the, my biggest uh, you know so somebody said uh, you know uh, he, he said uh, yeah, you know i can't see you being an alcoholic or a drug abuser or anything i go i'm not Give me a salad bar. Oh God. Oh God. Just you gotta put a timer yeah. on. This is this is how long you can eat, yeah. and then you must leave. Right. We've we've known for years you've been addicted to salad bars. And 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 ignoring the sneeze guard completely. <laughs> I, I but, don't like that at all. But, yes, I know. Just let yeah. me go in there and taste. Exactly. You're going to yes. nibble the, the, with your fingers. Yes, I know. I've got to taste fingers. it. Is this what use I want? Use the tongs. <laughs> Can't you use the tongs for one second? Oh, I do. <laughs> uh, no, I, no, I appreciate uh, the, the sentiment behind, hey, I care about you and I want, but that's of the thing. Course, and of but, course and I of want course, you, but, but it's but it's me, it's my friends. I, but I, you I, think I, about I, it, like if I told my friend, hey, I want you to lose weight or I told, I want you to stop taking drugs. Right? It's easy to say and hard to do. And it's not just a matter of willpower. It's not just a matter of keeping it in your mind. Sometimes there, I mean, with, with uh, addiction, there's a physical addiction. There's a, a disease that's taking over certain people's, yeah. of, of your brain okay. and your body. And so mm -hmm. like you have to figure out all that stuff. So it's, it's, uh, it's a mix of stuff. But I'm gonna tell you why I said for somebody else. Yes. Whenever I give a lecture or something about acting or, and, and you know, they ask about the auditions and everything, this is the advice I give them and I think this is correct. Yeah because my ego is correct. You're gonna go into the audition going, I please, dear God, let me get this, let me get this, let me please, everybody like that. Nobody at that table who, you, who you're auditioning for says, Jesus, I hope Richard gets this job. I want Richard to get, nobody says that. What they're saying is, I want this show to be Seinfeld. I want Seinfeld money. Go in saying, if you're good mm -hmm. and you really believe this, right. that you're right for the part, you gotta believe mm -hmm. you're right for the part, how can I help you? How can I help you make Seinfeld money? <laughs> Not only can I get it, I'm your best chance mm -hmm. at getting Seinfeld money. You cast me, you better mm -hmm. cast great around me. Take it right. all off yourself. Right. Don't worry about getting the job. Don't be nervous about going and go, I'm, I'm gonna help you guys out. You want to make Seinfeld money? I'm your guy. Spoken like the son of a jeweler. All right. That, that's about but it money. Is, it is positive. It's money. No, it's positive. But it's like, it's like I want to make the show great. I want to make the show great. I want to make the show great. And absolutely. I'm your guy. Right. I can help you make right. this part. I read it. I go, I can do this. Right. I would say that that as a, somebody who sits on the other side of the desk yeah. on occasion, that you're 100% right that going in nervous and saying, I want this, I want this, is, is completely unhelpful. Awful. Yeah. And... What I would, my advice to actors going in is just like, do your thing, just do your thing. And then we will see whether we think that's the right thing. In other words, it's not, that's okay. it's, it's, it's the same kind of thing. We're, I'm, we're thinking of somebody for this part. Now, but, the person but, walking in could be different than what we think of and they still blow us away because they're so good. But, but there's a little bit that's wrong with you. Okay. Oh my God, I'm gonna do my thing. I hope it's right. Yeah. I hope I'm right doing my thing. Therefore, they're still well, being there, judged. There is no right. You either are your thing or but not. But that's what you're thinking. I'm going to do, you're saying do your thing. Oh God, I hope my thing is correct. Of course. I hope my thing is what they want. It's not. This is how it should be done. I have, I, I swear to God. Uh -huh. People say when I'm finished. Yes. I didn't even see it that way. Right. And you know what my reaction is? What other way can you do it? 
Okay. Because you have an ego that says this is the way to I've do it. I've made my decision. How else? Yeah. How else can you do it? We, we, we now have to replace that microphone yeah. because you just broke <laughs> because it. Because I'm so... so I, but I, that's how passionate exactly. I get. Look, I just asked to be fired. Let me just ask from, the... From a funny is thing any happened. of this usable? This audio <laughs> usable? Yeah, okay. Great. All right. Could we be doing this right. live to every state yeah, in the country? Exactly. Because they'll hear it. Yeah. But yes, but you walk in with the confidence. You do it... But you don't always get the part, even with that attitude. You're not going to always get the part. I'm going to tell you something. Yes. You're right. <laughs> okay. I didn't think that was going to come out. You're right. I think you wanted so badly to say, no, I always do get but the part. But if I go in for a TV yes. audition, not for a pilot, but yes. for a TV audition, mm -hmm. not movies, yes. not, not theater, but TV, and the director gives me a piece of direction, yes, I have never lost the part. That's great. I know. Okay. Yeah, that's great. So you can go in with a firm decision. Yes. But be malleable. Of course. But go in with a firm decision. This is what I'm going to give you. Now you say, let's see what this guy does. Right. No, this is how this part should be. I got it. Right. Don't worry. Sit back. Relax. Right. I got this. Right. I got your back on this right. one. Right. This is made this, decisions. This is how it should be. You, this is not, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. This is how the character should be played. Right. Now. I think that's great for an actor to think that and the great for an actor to do that. And I think it's even better for an actor to hear a note and say, we would like you to go in this direction right. and then take that note. That's yes. fantastic. That that right. proves that that person can work. I always, if I love an actor's performance, if I think mm -hmm. they're great, if I've seen something wonderful, I will give them a note anyway to see if they can play. Exactly. So see if the yes, because I want to make sure and that on the, the day, real challenge, right? On the day, like we're gonna, this guy didn't just work on one scene a thousand times with a coach, and that's it. I want to see their mind work, and I want to see their creativity, and then I'm gonna give them a note and say, okay, I know the scene is about you robbing a bank, but could you play it this as, scene as if you're begging for money or right, whatever, or yes. whatever. Yeah. Uh, a, a funny story is that uh, I was being directed in a Tom Stoppard play, mm -hmm. and he gave me a note to play it this certain way, and this is how I reacted. That's the stupidest note in the world. Why would, that, it's, it's on the page, I would never do that. Look, I'm gonna try it, but that's the stupidest note ever. Right. right. I do it, and I finish, and I go, you're absolutely right. <laughs> okay. So with my braggadocio right. Right. saying, uh, a uh, it, whatever advice, whatever right. comes out of my mouth, I can acknowledge that I am incorrect. Right. But if I was doing that when I was an actor, and so I would not, I would hear that's the stupidest note. I would, but instead I would say, let me give it a try. I wouldn't. But I wouldn't I'm have saying, said that. But thing. But, I, but but the thing is, you ask, how do I have this confidence? Yeah. I don't. I have this passion. All right. I have this passion for 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 being in the in the heart of it, and saying and being in the heart of it means speaking what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, and therefore, and then through that I find out, oh, I'm not right. So right. I'm scared. I'm scared to meet this person. But after doing it, I, I look how happy I am. Oh my God, I'm glad that I walked up to this person and started talking. Right. I'm glad I walked into this memorial. Right. Scared, but right. willing to. Oh, I was happy to do I went. Everything. I was happy I went. I know went, that, but I'm saying that's how I walk in. Yeah. And I, I you know, I saw Summer Blair yeah. yesterday. Uh, and, um, uh, I, I didn't think she would remember me, so I went, and she goes, do you remember when we worked together? Right. Yes, of course, and I yeah. hugged her, and and I and it was so nice to see her, but I worry that somebody doesn't remember sure. me, and I want to remind them. I introduce them. myself all the time, but I'm not Richard yeah. Kind. That's the, the, well, the thing. Yeah. I, you know, I went to Jimmy Burroughs, who I've worked with many times, and I said, hey, Jimmy J. Hogan, like I'll say. Oh, that's funny, you know, yeah. Just always, okay. because you don't know, you don't know. Well, you know what? Bill Bradley used to be a customer of my father's. Yes. No, he's a six foot eight guy. Basketball pro and Senator and and Senator yes. comes into the store, uh, Mr. Kine. I'm Bill Bradley. My dad would go, right. yes, sir, I know, yes, I, know. I, and, I remember. Then he said, Mr. Kine, I'm Bill Bradley, <laughs> and I won't shake your hand because you're a Jew. <laughs> That's fine. And you don't belong in and this town. you don't town. belong in this town. Get out of Princeton. <laughs> But he was still Bill Bradley, and that's the main yeah. thing. Now, I got to tell you, my my dad, you, at his funeral, I, I I said this in the in the eulogy. I used to walk down the street with my dad. My dad was six foot four, and I was a little kid, and my hand would be up in the air holding his hand. Okay, and it would take an hour and a half to walk down the street. 
he would he I'd be walking walking and he would talk to somebody and I'd be making circles right. and, uh, like that and it, it would take forever. Right. When I shook Shaquille O'Neal's hand, I remember my arm going up right without with not out mm -hmm. up yes and i said that's what it was like that would shaking shaquille o'neal's hand right when i raised it up straight that was what it was like to walk down the street and have it there let me ask for, you something for an hour. yes did you rest your head on shaquille o'neal's chest and cry a little i, I wanted to I know. I, you know who i met last night who's that i met uh, uh kareem abdul jabbar oh wow yeah that's great 72 years old and he's just walks slow and he's he's just old he's old basketball is hard on your body it is it's basketball it's sports in it, general you know what i play in joe namath's golf tournament every mm -hmm. year and what are you gonna say joe wow good to see you wow you know when i was a right. kid wow like that one year i said to him I, my son max was playing football so i said joe my son just got on the football team this year and you know what he said to me football was not made for the human body He's right. That's what he said. He's right. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. You know, it's like uh, you can see they don't walk. They stop walking at a 55. You know, they have really. His hands, his knees. Oh, the poor, yeah. poor guy. But here's the question. You know, when, when you see Joe Namath, do you talk yeah. about his ears? Do you say, hey, Joe, what's hey, going Joe, on with your ears? How'd you get, how'd you get, <laughs> how does he, how does, how did the women come after that? <laughs> exactly. Like a, a, a big right. ewer. Broadway and Joe. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he was, um, Hey, he's such a lovely guy, but I, I I often wonder if when you're 17 years old and they say, we're going to give you everything, we're yeah. going to give you all this money, you're going to have fame, everything like that, but age 36, oh, you're going to hurt for the rest of your life. Right. What would you do? At age 17, you'd say, yeah, because you, you wouldn't say, think about age 36. You don't. You think you're invincible. Right. Yeah. yeah. You don't think about age 36. That's how I sort of live my life. Yeah. Well, well, okay. Well, that's good. Okay. You don't, you don't. I think don't. I don't. Too far I don't ahead. Yeah, I don't think. But I told my okay advice to my kids. Mm -hmm. Please work out. Yeah. Please exercise. Do they listen? No. Right. Because you're my father. Guess what no. my father told me every day. What? Don't eat so much and work out. Yeah. Because he he, he was had a great to battle he, it. He no, he didn't have to battle. He was very strong and he worked out all the time really? and he had a great metabolism and all that oh. kind of stuff. It was not. A, that's not a Arnie Kogan thing. Oh. That's a Sue Kogan thing. That's my mom's side. Is we're the, I gotcha. the Sue Kogans are we're, we're heavy and fat. But it didn't help that my dad would say, "Hey, you shouldn't eat that." You know, or you should work out. It didn't help that that advice didn't help because we know we already know. Yeah, but now that I'm older, yeah. I go, oh God, and I get up from the low couch and I go, oh my God, God, I wish I worked out when I was younger. I wish I worked out. I, oh, it's all I wanted to do. I just wouldn't be feeling like this so they can see it. Yes. It still does nothing. Can I tell think. you something? What? 30 years ago, when you would get out of a chair, you would still go, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's still, the Jew in me. Okay. That was that, that, that was for, but yeah, still, right, you're right. It still that was, was that, that was Richard Kine, that was in my persona. <laughs> you're right. You're so, right. okay, but that's just who you are. Well, yeah. Did Thank I answer you. anything that you wanted? Yes. My takeaway from this is if I believed in myself as much as you believe in yourself, I would be able to- And as to a writer, you do believe in yourself. But I you? believe in the thing. In other words, I'll yeah. write the thing and work on the thing and then believe in that. Right. And that's the reason why I stopped being an actor is because when they were saying no to me, no to mm -hmm. me as an actor, I couldn't take that rejection. But when they say no to a script, I go, okay, well, that's that. It's not okay, me. Yeah. And so it's a, it was a little bit separate. And I don't, you know, everybody says, oh, how do you take the rejection? No. Right. I don't, I don't, I don't care about that. As a matter of fact, I love auditioning. Right. I love to audition. It, you finally get to go into, and you, you, you get a part. It's right. like I'm a one man repertory company. Yeah. Oh, look what I get to audition with. Right. Look, look what I get to do. Do you do the filming? Sure. Uh, the, uh, and everybody one. says, oh, I, I, I hate that. Oh, what, what are we doing? Self tape. Love the self tape. I love it. I get to do the take that I want. Right. This but is what I'm going to do. You don't get to hear the note. You don't get to hear the note. Do it this way. You'll get called back yeah. if they want to. If if it's if it's something that's worthwhile, right. or they say, "Wow, you're you're close to what it is," then then we'll play with you. You know, we'll 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 right. do it. But no, a self tape. I love it. I love it. The best advice I mean, that you give actors, which is great, is go in and do what you want to do. Make a great choice. Make a choice. Make your best choice, and then do it, and be happy with that performance. That's the performance That's right. that you just have to be happy with. Don't worry about getting the job, not getting the job. The only parts I ever got were, were jobs I didn't want, were things where I actually didn't give a shit about it and I was relaxed enough to actually give a decent performance in an audition. I, I agree with that and yet, in fact, recently, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want the part. 
and I tend to not be good. I used to I used to say, oh, I'm, I'm, I don't want this thing, and then I go in and I, I I do well. And if they give you, they say, oh, you're great, you're great. Well, let's do it this way. Then all of a sudden, I like the part, but because they want me, right. but I'll go in for anything. All right. I go in for everything. Yeah, everything. I love it. What's the greatest part? Just talking about your kids. What's the greatest part about being a parent for you? I love when they are together on the couch or in a room. It's as if they are at camp, that they love each other. Now, they can push each other's buttons. Right, sure. But when they are laughing with each other and they're shorthand and they and they're, they're just sitting on the couch playing, I have a picture of my son helping my daughter with her math homework. Oh, that's sweet. It is the most beautiful picture it's just so great. I got to, you know, the the guy, I, I once like was sitting on the couch, the three of them are there and then they see that I'm taking pictures, surreptitiously taking a picture and they do it and then they realize it and then the, all three of them just go, give me the finger. <laughs> and we're not allowed to curse in my family okay. unless, and this they can't do, unless it's for comic effect. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes, for instance, giving a finger right. while I'm taking it is hilariously how, funny. How do you impose the no cursing rule? How does that come up? I say, no, mm-hmm. no. Yeah. Don't do that. And we, we'll be in the car and they're playing their music and it's, you know, it's they're, they're connected to the, the speaker or whatever and they'll hear the bad words that are coming over and I can see them look glance over at me when they're, you know, hey, right. fucking it, you know, or right. even especially the N word, which mm-hmm. I can't take. Right. And they'll look over and I'll just say, well, you want me to fucking curse? I can curse just, I can fucking curse just with the best of them, mm-hmm. guys. Right. But, uh, and, they, and they'll, uh, they'll, in the house when they curse, and I'll go, no, 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 no. The world is dirty enough already. I don't need to add to it. You want to make a joke? Mm. I I welcome it. Yeah. Go ahead, fucking use it. Right. That's the joke. Okay. But do not curse, and they don't curse. Now I have a feeling in real life they might. Yeah, of course. But they will. Uh, I hope that they don't. Okay. Well, as a parent, yes, parent to parent, I'm going to encourage you. Yeah. To the next time you desperately want to give your child advice. Yeah. To spend. A good five to ten minutes not giving the advice. Oh, of course. Just being quiet. Being being quiet, quiet, listening to them, feeling with them what they're feeling. Just hold back just a little bit. Yep. Just so that they see they feel seen enough and in that version loved enough. You're absolutely right. And I'm gonna tell you an example of me doing that. Okay. A week ago Friday, I take my daughter out. She's she's home from uh, from school and uh we go out to dinner and we have a nice conversation during dinner and everything and i say gosh i hope i'm not i'm not invading her privacy but i say do you i know she sees a therapist do you still see the therapist that you saw in new york she says something to the effect of she knows me better than anybody did we've been you know it's been five years and she knows me better i can and she calls me on everything and i say do I? Do you tell her everything? And she thinks. She goes, "Yeah, I do." And I go, "Like what?" <laughs> and she laughs. She goes, "I'm not going to tell you." And I go, "Well, tell me one of the things that she done." She tells me. It's not so intimate. I keep my mouth shut. I listen to everything she says, and then she takes it to a step further, where she tells me something that was mm-hmm. something that I might not have heard from her right and i just nod Mm -hmm. wanting to wanting to say of course wanting but in that moment in that moment you're so connected and you she's treating you like somebody who can hear her i know i know makes me cry right that's beautiful makes me cry yeah i I, um i'm the other way i think my son wishes at some point i gave more advice or not even more was harder on him my yeah. son wishes I at I'm, some point. I'm, I'm hard on my wishes kids. was. I'm that I'm I'm, I'm I'm much I'm, yeah. um I'm very good now. My my wife, my ex, she's just a good heart. Dana used to go in and do what was called mama bed. She would sit with those kids for fifteen to twenty minutes every night, mm-hmm. just listening to them. Probably just lying next right. to them, listening. I would do that. 
and I'd fall asleep. Of course. <laughs> Me too. That's a I'd lot of it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able I to. I can't do it. Yes. But that was mama bed. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That was mama bed. She and she potential. still, she does it. Yeah. My ego can't take it. Okay. She is a listener. Mm -hmm. Now she's a therapist. Right. She's just great. And she's just, well, you knew Dana. She, yeah. She was, she's great. Yes. That's why we're not together. I know. Because that's all right. I tend to talk. Right. And I'm loud. Mm -hmm. She was going, ah, stop. Yeah. Right. You know, but that's how she She argue. knew no. that when she married you. I know. That's the thing. And then she came up, were you at my wedding? Yeah, of course. So then you remember what I said. Yes. I, I love, love you because, because you love, love me. me. Of course. What an ego. What I know. a fucking ego. I think that's genius. I, I was going to mention, I forgot it all about, of course. I love I'm you idiot. because you love me is so, you know, so you centric, but that's, that's I know, fair. but it's, it's interesting. But, it, but that's part of the truth. It's not that I didn't love I understand. her, but it is true. That's how I felt. Right. Right. I mean, she, she showed me such love. Another way to say that, which would be less egocentric is you make me feel so loved. That will never get a laugh. No, I know. <laughs> but that's that's the sweet version of that. Of course. But yes, the other- Of course. Good. Well, yeah. I just didn't have the vocabulary. Yes, I understand. Yeah, or the, or right. the, the knowledge. But it's the truth, and yes. let's say it and say it and say it. And, that's and she said, we will celebrate our differences. Yes. We found it was too difficult to celebrate. Right, I understand. So uh, that happens. My wife and I uh, do have plenty of differences. <laughs> right. Yes. Right, but um, it's sort of funny. My, but our, my difference is I want to go out. I want to socialize. Yes. I want to go to the party and be the last to leave. Right. I can't leave a party. And I always wonder what's going on next. I have three things that I want to do. I always stay too late. I'm always late because I'm staying wherever right. I am. I like being wherever I am. Right. But well, that's good. I know. That's your enjoying life. I know. Yeah. That's what gives me the ego yes. to talk and be there. I have mixed feelings. I, last night, when everybody was at the smokehouse, uh -huh. and and I was sitting at home with my wife, and she said, and I, Pressman said, "We're at the smokehouse," and uh, and I said, "Are you going to come?" I said, "No, not going to." Like I missed, I would miss what's going on at the smokehouse, but I would also miss what's going on. Just what was going time. on at home? Just, just me and my wife sitting together, having a night together. That's all. Yeah, but you, I had. Met people earlier in the day. I had experienced a little bit of that, and I sort of want. Why to you're a good husband? I wanted to sit with that. That's little why bit. you're a good husband. I yeah. don't think. Oh, I, I would beat the shit out of her <laughs> when I was there. Don't get me wrong. Oh, she got the bag of this. Nice, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was. It was a productive I should have gone to the bar. She, she knew what. Yeah, she knew her place. She prayed for that no, I would go to the smokehouse. I, I would not like a night like that. Yeah. Yeah. I guess nowadays would I. I stay home much more, but I'm I'm known to go to every party until every, even mm -hmm. if I'm not having a good time. So maybe, if I invite you to party and you don't show, you must hate me. Is I that just, the idea? That is exactly. Is that, is that you the can answer? put it in your diary. Oh, holy shit! Yeah. Okay. One more example yeah. of rich kind. Oh my god! All I right. never miss a party. When do I ever miss a party? I don't know. I've never never heard about it. I mean, you're. It's, do you know that one of my favorite jokes came because of uh, uh, the, the Briss? Your son's bris. Yes, yes. You know what my, my joke was? We'll say it again. Everybody said, how was it? And I go, a little too Jewy for my taste. <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> it's my, one of my no, favorite No, I know, you, get, you told uh, my hey. son's 20th birthday, we put it on a, on a tape. For Did him. we? Oh. Yes. That was I always love saying that. Yes. Eh, a little too Jewy for my taste. And I good. now use that punchline, yes. but that's the first time it's I ever said joke. it. It's a great joke, it's a great joke. I know. Richard, I, we now do part of this show where we go to take a viewer uh, question from a listener. Listener, I love that. And we're gonna we're gonna take the question. And you're gonna answer the question from the listener. Great. Okay. The, these are questions. How, did I go too long? There's no time limit here. Oh, good. There's no time limit because here. I can talk and talk. I love. First of all, I love talking to you. Well, I love talking to you. I, I know why that. I, want I know that. But I'm also. <laughs> I love talking. Right. I, love, I, just I know. Wanna, like I love. You know. I. You know something I hate. What. Eating alone. Do you like to go into a restaurant and eating it. alone? I can't either. I can't do it. I can't go to a movie alone either. Oh, I can. Yeah. Oh, oh, I don't like going with people. Yeah. As a matter of fact, yesterday, I sat. I decided to sit next to Andrew Hill Newman. Yes. So that when I cried, I wouldn't be embarrassed. I didn't want to be next to right. Ben Weiss. He called me and made ben fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> as, long, as long as I yeah, Oh, do you know what I did? I just took my daughter. <laughs> I once took my daughter to, to War Horse, no. the, the, the play sure. at Lincoln Center. And at the end, is and it was this was her birthday gift. Right. She must have been about eight years old. 
<laughs> at the end, I'm crying and I'm just sobbing. Right. And my daughter <laughs> like peeks around to look at her father going, and I just took my hand and I go, <laughs> I just pushed right. her out of the way. The fuck Can we talk way. about that War Horse may yeah, not man. be the best play for an eight-year-old? <laughs> Well, who knew? It's, it's, <laughs> I didn't know. It's, Read a it's, review, it's, it's, Richard. It's guys running around pretending to be horses. <laughs> I didn't know. Okay. okay. Go, go. I just want uh, to right. have to say. A, anyway, the, uh, this is viewer mail. So we people come. I'm going to give the address again, which is if you have a question for oh. my me or my guest, write to uh, D B A W J K at gmail.com. So that when I wasn't here at 1.30, it was, I mean, at 12.30 on time, Yeah, it was bad. Why? Because I was late and people are tuning in to Nobody, listen. this is not live. Oh, I thought you said somebody's calling in. This is an old email. This is an email that somebody sent in from a week ago to a generic well, guest of mine. I didn't know it's that. Not for, it's not specifically for you. The last guest was uh, like Kevin Pollack or somebody like that. Oh, well, that's yeah. a guy who can that's call a good, good. He's yeah. very funny. They're and he knows, had... he knows how to be a good guest. He's a good guest. You're a great yeah. guest. Am I a good guest? You're a great guest. I like that. Did, you ever, did you ever listen to me on Mark Maron? Uh, no. On Mark Maron's show, I, I was always wondering, why doesn't he ask me? And I said, Mark, I want to be the best guest in the world. Right. I want to be a memorable, to you, right. Mark, a memorable and guest. And how did I you make that best. memory? How did you do it? Did you do I it? I don't know. I just want to be. Did you succeed? Have you been on it? I think I'm a good guest. Uh, but, but how'd you do on Mark Maron? Very good. What'd you do on that show that you're not doing here? Why aren't, why aren't you giving me the full Mark I think Marin? I'm giving you. I okay, think I good. am. I'm giving you the full Mark I think the, the And I want you to call me the best guest. Yes, but okay. With Kevin Pollack, that's going to be tough. It's, I have had a lot of really good guests. Stephen really? Weber was on. He was oh, a great Weber's guest. great. Yeah. And, it's like and Weber will guests. go with your jokes and he'll take you with the tangents. I hear your jokes, I'll laugh, but I go, stop, stop. <laughs> I don't want to hear your joke right, right. now. I want to answer this question. That's my ADD. I understand, but yeah. it's fine. It's fine. It's, and your AD is making the joke. That's true. Yeah. But what makes a good guest here on this show is if people actually dig down into themselves and give a little bit of who they are and not just make a joke. And you've done that. You know why? Because I'm authentic. That's true. Good night, That's everybody. Exactly. And you can fit your whole fist well, in your I mouth. can, but I won't do it. I, well, I, won't, I don't want to see it here. It. Know, but but just to say that you, there's more to you than just a loud voice. <laughs> you can also put your fist in your mouth. So that's yes. good. Anyway, here's the question uh, that I have from this viewer, Ed. Uh, listener, viewer, it's viewed on YouTube and it's listened to on a podcast Whoa, world. Okay. So I don't know whether it's a listener How many or a viewer. Have you done? This is the uh, 23rd nice. show I've okay. recorded, okay. something Great. like that. Great. Maybe that. We've, I'm honored to be so yes, early in the list. But it hasn't been, they haven't been airing in order. So there's some like sitting in the, oh. so, so we don't do it in order. We just pick Great. the ones that are coming up. Okay. Anyway, so anyway. So anyway, here's the, the this is a, there's a jingle. There's a listener mail jingle that we'll hear. Now it's time for Listener Mail. That was great. Uh, it's, we, don't, we can't really hear it. Well, they're going to put it in post. I got you. Okay. But the, they'll hear it. Okay. So what? A, why would you say that to me then? Because then we, on the camera, but you we'll knew. Look, oh. On camera, that will look like we're hearing it. Okay. So here again. That was great. Okay. So here's good. That was charming. Let's do it again. So okay. okay. There's a Listener Mail theme song that we're going to hear. Can I hear it? Yeah. Let's hear it. Now it's time for. Listener mail. That's very oh, good. That's good. Isn't that good? That's good. Okay. So oh, that's wow. Charlie. Yeah. My son wrote that. I could. I was going to say who yeah. wrote it. Charlie Kogan. And it's yeah, summable. It's very good. Okay. Um, I right. loved it. And here is the question. How do you decide what work to turn down? We tend to say yes to everything, but at some point, we know we need to say no. How do you decide which projects to do and which projects to skip? I can give you a flat answer of one type is that after I did A Serious Man, I got offered way too many Jewish roles. Okay. And I don't want to be known as the Jewish actor. Too and, late. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh well, God. I'll give you an example right. of yes. why it's actually not. All right. Is after A Serious Man, uh, I auditioned for a movie that Clint Eastwood did. Okay. Playing a, a character of Greek descent. Mm-hmm. To this day, Clint Eastwood still calls me, hey, it's the Greek. I did the movie. I was So there are plenty mm -hmm. of roles right. that when I say a Jewish role, right. it's I don't have to speak any Yiddish. Right. I don't have to be so oi, oi, right. like that. And it's just not, I don't, the Judaism isn't worn right. on its sleeve. Yes. Okay. okay. Those things are tough to turn down and I, I will turn them down. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one thing. How do I know what, what the, uh, turn down. I don't. I, I pretty much take everything. 
and it's only time and uh money is sometimes an mm-hmm. issue time is an issue uh and if i and nowadays if i don't like the script right but even if i do like the script i mean even if i don't like the script right. i'll still do it and i'll tell you a young i should send you two two great shorts that i did uh that i i just love that no money not nothing at all I would love to but see they're, they're they're terrific yeah. although one may be turned into a movie oh, that's great yes and she got hired by mm-hmm. by uh, like caa or something and it's 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 great do you still require full frontal nudity in every part in everything okay I, as, but only if i'm working with julianne moore <laughs> julianne moore i say right. no frontal nudity okay. i only leave it up to her that's good okay. all right listen <laughs> they film it they don't always use it but they film it and that's the important thing listen you got to have your writer your contract right. The thing, you know, that's why we, that's why the SAG fought over it, to honor your contract. And if your contract says full frontal, full frontal. Now, can I tell something to sure, Ed or please. Eric or what, what's Ed. his name? Ed. Ed, if you are an actor or to anybody who's listening and is an actor, take every, a young actor. Yeah. Take everything. Of course. It, yeah. but, but I'm not kidding. Yeah. Go do theater. Right. Go do anything. You never know who you'll meet. You'll never know where it'll go. You never know how much you'll learn. Do everything. Completely agree. You don't, if you're uh, just starting out, you don't be choosy. There's no choosy. It's just doing. Oh, it's working. There are, there are people who choose. It's insane. Well, Hank Azaria used to say, have you never heard the word no? Yeah, well. And I, I didn't. He asked me that about 25, 30 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I mean, say I say yes to everything. Especially when you're starting out, nobody's going to ding you for having been in, in something. They're going to ding you for not working. They're going to ding. Right. Work, work begets work. You get to meet a bunch of people, even if you worked on the shittiest thing. You might meet somebody who's working on something else and say, I know this person and I think they'll be great for this role and you get may get the good role. Yeah, you never so, know where to lead. Yeah. However, I recently left a production, sadly, that I was really looking forward to, but it was untenable. What was untenable? In fact, in fact it was because you knew him. You knew Larry Gilbert. Yeah. It was a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Oh yeah. That's what I was doing in Paris. Yes. But I, I couldn't do it. Why? I, did, did you not know? That, that's why I'm here now. Well, thank God. Uh, 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 the, the director, who was a lovely man. Right. And had directed, if you ever saw One Man, Two Governors with uh, James Corden. Yes. He directed all the physical comedy in that. He directs Cirque du Soleil. Mm-hmm. He wanted me to be a clown. You can't be a clown in uh, A Funny Thing Happened. Right. You can be a clown in a panto. A right. pantomime. And, sure. And, you know, but you can't be a clown no. in that. You can be a funny actor, a yeah. comic actor. He wanted a clown. Were you the zero must help? Yeah. That's and not a clown. I He's know. the smart guy. He knows everything. And he said, everybody's dumb. Everybody's stupid in the show. I go, this guy isn't stupid. Right. Well, I, I just wasn't for him. I got you. And I kept begging him, Cal, I'm not who you want. Right. I'm not who you want. No, you're going to be brilliant. I go, I know I am, but not in your production. Right. I, I, I was ferocious. He wanted a clown. So he, then they got. Do you know what he honestly said? What? And this it, to anybody who yeah. knows theater at all, he says, "I don't want anybody looking at each other. I don't want you looking in the <laughs> eyes. Just take it out there." Right. And I go, "I can't do that." He right. goes, "He goes every choice you make. Right. It's not Arthur Miller. He goes, you're so subtle." I go, "I'm subtle." <laughs> go, you're asking me. I go, I go, I, I can't. The lady in the in the second balcony, she right. can't give me freedom. This guy can give me freedom. I can't look at her. Right. That's crazy. Well, that's a crazy. That's a bad direction. On every page, there was an infraction, and some were added lines, and some were excised lines of Larry Gelbart, and I knew Larry. So a terrible, terrible. It was a. It was terrible, incorrect. Okay. It was a mismatch. Yeah, so I left. But but, but but four weeks of rehearsal in London. But that sounds like a terrible, terrible thing. It like was a, like, it was like, a terrible who thing. Who would want to see the show where no one's looking at each other, no one's listening, and people are overacting everything? I hope that it's not as bad as you say. But it's not my funny okay. thing happened. It sounds terrible. Yeah, I know. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Did what else? Get, who, uh, who else asked a question? Anybody I mean, else? Who who replaced you? Ronald McDonald? Like what happened? No, the guy who was playing Hysterium yep. was a wonderful actor. Yeah. But as Hysterium, there was nothing Hysterium about it. Right. He's supposed to be like Don Knotts. Right. You know, whenever he sang, "I'm calm, I'm calm, right. I'm perfectly calm," I'm going, "I know, I know, I know you are <laughs> calm." He, he did nothing. I said, and I told him. You should be playing pseudolist. You're you're fantastic right. in this, and he's a good clown, right? And he's a good comic actor right. too. Uh, he's not the actor I am, right? Okay, he wasn't ferocious about it all. Okay, but I said you should be doing it, and he goes, "No, you're New York. You're you you." I go, "I know, but that's not what Cal wants. You should be doing it." How quickly it. did you know that it was wrong? Four days into it, it's interesting because you think, I, but I stayed a month and two days. Well, per diem. 
<laughs> you're in Paris in the per diem. <laughs> Holy, God, you're gonna, you're not stupid. Uh, you're not I mean, gonna walk away. I mean, the, 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 that that crepe with the Nutella. I know that ain't cheap. It's pretty well, nice. That's five euros sure. right there. You know, that, I don't, I know which beautiful hotel you were staying at, but you're staying at a pretty nice hotel, I'm sure. But I mean, here's the thing: you think you're saying you, you think by now after 60 years, everyone knows what what uh, that play is. You know, like. You th when you say yes, you think, okay, yeah, sure, I'm he's, perfect for that play. He said the play doesn't work in 2023. I said, yes, it does. Yeah. But I knew how we, I know he wanted to change it a little in ways that were sort of cute, sort of this, that. It's not very woke. It's 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 a oh, little, it's not, um, not, sure. and, but but we celebrated. Yeah. In fact, I, I, I added some words at the beginning at his request saying, for those of you who are weak of heart, Brace yourselves for this is not the year 2023. We take you now, you know, for, right. throw your Puritan beliefs aside. Mm. We take you now to ancient Rome, right. something familiar yeah. to that. So, uh, but um, um, well, I was, I, I was much more theatrical. In, I, I don't know. It's, it, 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 it was um, a little misbegotten for my tastes. I got it. Yeah, it well, was not for so, me. So was it, since you take everything and say yes to everything, was this the hardest one of the hardest decisions to sort of like make it not happen. Yeah, it was sad. Yeah, yeah. Sad. I don't. I, I didn't quit. Yeah. Okay. But I kept asking him to fire me. I he said. I said I'm not going to quit. Please fire me. I one day he left rehearsal, throwing on his jacket and slamming the door. I wrote him two two emails of apology. Right. I said I'm I'm sorry. It's this is how I react. I'm not. It seems like I'm yelling. I'm not. I'm just passionate. And uh, I came in and I apologized to him. He goes. It was it was not right, and, and and but I, because I am and have this ego of yeah. that I have to say what's on my mind. Yes. I would say it to his assistants. I would say it to members of the cast, and he would hear it, and uh, and it it bled into the cast, and it was not healthy, ah. and so they fired me. The, okay. the the producers said, Richard, I am sorry, but uh, I'm afraid that we have to let you go. I go, Jean Luc, it's the best decision you could possibly right. make. Yes. Absolutely right. That's good. Absolutely right. I, I will refuse to quit, but I believe you are doing the right thing. Because also, if you quit, then you sacrifice the money. Oh, what if they fire you? When, they, when my manager said, do we try and go after I go, do not go after yeah. the money. Absolutely right. not. Okay. No, that's not, that, that's not it. I'm not going to quit. Okay. I'm not going to leave them in the lurch. I didn't know what they were going to do. So, But they figured something out. Right. Get, get rid of me. Right. Absolutely. Did the right thing. All right. All right. Well, that's good. I'm glad that you didn't have to sit through that. And, yeah. and be I'd be there. Painful. I'd be there tonight. All right. It would be horrible. Uh, horrible. Uh, yeah. That that sounds terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. That's terrible. like a prison kind of thing. Yeah, yeah it is. I mean, prisons. Yeah. Actual prisons. Well, worse. My, my neck and my back hurt, and one night my chest hurt. Yeah. Uh, it was it was horrible. It was horrible. One time, one time I yelled at, at an actor. I yelled him. You, you know the play, right? You know, yeah. one, two, three, yeah. four, I'm giving away the money. Right. And then I go, uh, seven, eight. He goes, hey, he goes, uh, what happened to five and six? I go, I, I'm coming to that, nine, five, six. Right. So he would go, one, two, three, five, he'd go, hey, and instead of going, what happened to five and six? He'd go, hey, 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 what happened to five and six? I go, no, come right in on it. Right. That's what you gotta do, it's right. a vaudeville rhythm. Timing, yeah. And then the next day, he uh, uh, he didn't do what right. I had I had talked to him about it. Mm. The next day he didn't. I go no no come right in on it. And then I stopped rehearsal. Mm. I said David, I am I'm so sorry. Right. I'm sorry. I I have no right to yell at you. No right. You're a great actor. You've been in this profession for too long. Nobody right. should yell at you like that. Gave me a hug. I looked at, and then when I left, I said David, uh, and he forgiven me. And right. he, he didn't care. And I go David, I will carry that for the rest of my life. And I would, I will, I will carry yelling at that actor right. for the rest of well, my you life. You apologize. You can't let it oh, go. I apologize in front of the whole let, cast. Let it go. No, I will. That that he that, forgave you. Yeah, of course he forgave me. But that I could be driven to that point. Okay, but that's fine. I will carry that to the rest of my so life. So that you got angry is human. Is human, and, then, and, and but that's what kind of professional I am. I can't too. believe I'm trying to boost your ego. Yeah. What am I doing? <laughs> trying to boost your fucking ego. I'm a good man. Oh, you're a good I'm man. I'm a good man. And and uh, you're forgiven for that. There are many I know, things I know. you should absolutely I know. carry for the rest of your life yeah. and be upset about. <laughs> that's not one of them. Okay. All right. You can pick up a check once in a while. Anybody Otherwise, else interested in me? No, no never, no, never. No. Exactly. All right. Actually, uh, I'm good at that now. I'm very good. All right, good. Okay. Uh, this is now the, uh, the section of the show we call the moment of joy. A moment of joy. Ah, oh, okay. 
Oh, that's that's okay. joyous right there. Uh, and so I ask you, what's something? And you can't say your kids because I've already it's too done easy. It. I've already done it because it's on the couch. What do you do? What, do you, what what gives you joy? What gives you joy that I might not expect or that I don't know about you? Well, I'm on a thread called CADS. Mm -hmm. You know about that? I don't know CADS. CADS, Character Actor Dining Society. Okay. Or I am out to dinner with friends of mine who who I love, and I'm sitting there, and it's fun, and I'm having a great time. I will pause, and I go, literally, in my head, I hope I never die. <laughs> and that gives you joy? It, it When I pause, and I yeah. realize how lucky I am, Look at the people who I surround myself with okay. that I'm able to be with how them. How good life is. How good life yes. is. Yeah. I hope I never die. And that's before you decide to split up the check 18 ways. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I, no, somebody has already but picked up the Bradley check. How much is Bradley Whitford paying? <laughs> is he paying the same amount as everybody else or a little Wait, bit less? I have a great, I have a story that doesn't sound like it's a good story, but it ends up being a good All story. Right. I'm in, I took my kids to Ireland and Paris right. for a week each this summer. We're out to dinner in Paris. By the way, I hate traveling with my kids and eating because my kids will go, I'm hungry, let's eat here. And they go, no, 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 we don't, we don't we, I got a restaurant, we're gonna go. Right. No, I'm hungry, I wanna eat here. I go, no, we don't even know what the quality is. Right. I'm hungry, I wanna eat here. And I, I, what are you gonna do? Right. So they eat there. So one night we're at dinner and my daughter says to me, daddy, you gotta lift the seat. You gotta lift the seat. You got. You can't do it. And I go, okay, honey. She goes, don't laugh. You have to. And I go, I will. She goes, why are you laughing? Don't laugh. And I go, I'm not laughing at you. I'm just, I'm laughing at you. She goes, you always do that. All of a sudden, my other daughter pitches in on something that bothers her about me, and then my son comes in, and they're all they're all attacking me. Right? They're attacking sure. me, and I go, "What do you want me to do? You want me to leave dinner?" And my daughter goes, "Yes," like that. And I go, and and they they just are coming at me with things that bother me, <laughs> and I go, "Oh my God, guys, stop!" And then all of a sudden, they stop. And they go, but we love this trip. <laughs> We're having such a good, we love right. you, daddy. Okay. We love you. We're so, so and the, the, I mean, it was four to five minutes sure. of just a barrage right. of things. Right, but I love you made it okay. Then we go on with right. the rest of the evening. Okay. Each kid came in alone. I'm, I'm telling mm -hmm. you, right. not knowing that the other right. kid came in and just said, daddy, we love you. We did, we died. I'm so sorry that we attacked you like that. We just, we love you so much. We're having such a good, each kid. And I'm telling you, they did not know it. All right. That was one of the happiest moments That's of my beautiful. life because mm -hmm. my kids can talk to me like that, <laughs> that they're so free to say what's on their mind. When it's, I love you, dad. That's no. not the hard talk. No. When they're saying, how often did you yell at your dad? I, dad, I can't stand what you're doing. Never. Me neither. Yeah, never. My kids, go at it. Yeah. All right. God bless them. Yeah, God bless they them. They can talk to me. Yes. My kids are so open yes. with me that they can say, this is how I feel. This is what you're doing. I don't like it. Yes. I don't feel good about this. I love that. I love that too. And I, my kids do it. That's great. And and do it a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, and not in a mean way, yeah. not to tear me down, but dad, don't, don't stop. I, I don't, the, 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 and, and will tell me. I, I, that is great. I think I, I think I have that relationship with my son, but maybe my wife says, you know, Charlie's scared of you. The, my, she's, my wife thinks that my son is scared of me. And it's like, uh -huh. and if that's true, that's, that's sad to me because uh -huh. I, I hope that Do he you can believe tell that? Me. Do you believe he's scared of you? I think that he thinks my opinion is important, but I don't think he's scared of me. My wife will say to me when I don't do something or something like that, they go, you know, your kids think you, you like your friends better than they like you. And so I've asked them all. Right. And they know. Right. They know I love them outrageously. I love them. Right, of course. And we'll do anything. Of course. And not just we'll do anything, yes. do do anything. Right. Absolutely. There's nothing that yeah. I wouldn't do. But she that's one of her hey, arguments. A weapon. That you, was a know, weapon. It's a weapon. Yeah, it's a weapon. Your kids think that they yeah. like your friends better yeah. than they like if you. If she had only talked to a therapist, she could, oh, wait, she is a therapist. Oh, no. <laughs> Hold on a second. Physician heal thyself. <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. So the joy. Look, it's, it's us now. Yep. Uh, give me a cup of coffee for right. two hours with a friend. Yeah. There's nothing brings Agreed. me more I, joy. 
By the way, that's the whole reason I started this podcast. Yeah, nothing is that be more, more joy. I wanted to connect with people, and I thought it's important to have connection with people and to show yeah. people that they should connect more with people for whatever reason. Yeah. So that's why it's don't be alone. The whole point is don't be alone. Don't be alone. Be, which is which is why I said right. But a cup of coffee in a diner yeah, yeah. alone. Yes. Blah. Horrible. What? Not horrible. only horrible. Yeah. Won't do it. Right. I refuse to do it. Give me five, ten people. Right. So I'm not I've, alone and I'm with friends and I feel love. I've had to learn to do it and as an exercise to do it, to learn to be okay with myself. In other words, to not to not just cover myself with conversation and friends to sort of sit with myself. And which is hard for me. Me too. So And how many people do you ask when I say I would never eat in a restaurant look, they go, I love yeah, people do it. Yeah, people love it. People love it. Yeah. Okay, so you think I have a huge ego, but that's not it. Yeah. I can't be alone with myself. Right. And you, you, last night, you were alone with Brown. Yeah, but that's not alone. That's, I'm with Brown. But that's being alone. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm not kidding. Right. Not, not alone with yourself, right. alone as a, as a unit. Yes. Is, I'm not great with that either yeah. yet. All right. I got, I, yeah. I got a few years left. Sure. You can you know, do it. Well, you now that live. I've lost weight and will live yes. much longer. Yeah, 120. And I really do say, there. I used to say, I want to live forever because I don't want to miss the movies and plays that are, that will come out yeah. and I don't want to miss them. Now I don't see so many movies. I see plays, right. but I don't see that many movies. Then when my kids were born, I'd say, I don't want to die because I want to see my, my yeah. kids grow up. I want to see them be well. I want, yeah. to, I want to be around them. That's but, good. But, it, but yeah, it is. It's good. Yeah, it's, I want to die because there are certain kids I do not want to see what happens. <laughs> that really just like cut I me also, off. Also, the parts that I'm now getting that I'm getting to do, mm -hmm. like I did a, a cop drama last year. Yeah, loved it. That's oh, great. I didn't have to pause for laughs. It was, I right. just got to be a human being. Yeah, I loved it. I, loved I know. It. I loved it. How many yeah. cases did you solve? We were on for twenty six, maybe. Okay, twenty six. Thank God. <laughs> All right, Richard. Thank you for being here. Yeah, but can I, I tell you something? Yes. Joy. Good. Good. It's a joy for me. Being with you. Do you remember the the meal that we had after the- I do. Uh, the groundlings, yeah. That brought me joy. Me, me too. I've I've had many moments of joy sitting around a table I, with I you, either eating or playing poker, yep. or uh, yep. sitting with you. You're a delightful guy. Your ego is well-deserved. <laughs> uh, we, Your friends love you to death. You know, I think they do. They do. And I don't like being in poker so much. By the way, do you still love play, playing poker? I do, but I don't love for the stakes that, that are- Me friends. neither. Yeah. That will, that I right. do not but like. But I play, in, I play in very inexpensive games and I have a great time. You do. Yes. I, and it, how much is inexpensive, 510? Uh, buy-in is, and one of the games I play buy-in is $100. And and I love that, I love it. that. Okay, the thing is I can't have a lot of joy at a poker game because my my anxiety and my desire to win, and, and this this is a crazy thing. Winning $1,000 is great. Losing 15 kills me. Yeah, yeah. With, with, okay, $1,000, yeah, great. Who the fuck needs yes. it? Very, Losing 15 right. kills Very me. Greek of you. That's the Greek that you play <laughs> right there. Uh, anyway, thank you for being here. I love you, and I, love I, I hope to have you back again. I love hopefully, it. hopefully, sometime you'll be do another play that you that you have to leave, and you'll come back here and do that. May I tell you one other yes. thing? You know what I hate? Going out to dinner one on one. Really I hate it. Why? And yet we had this because we have topics of conversation because I don't know what we're going to talk about. I worry about it. I, 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 it was always something I worried about with marriage, with going out on a date. What are we going to talk about? Interesting. But we knew what we were going to talk about here. But well, I don't. You like knew the being general area. You didn't know exactly what we we're going to talk about. I knew the general uh, area uh, about uh, authenticity, about uh, saying things. I knew we know. were going to talk about me. Okay, that's right. So, so that you're very I'm comfortable. Good. I'm good with that. Okay, that's good. But a uh, date or, or right. <laughs> certainly right. not my marriage. Right, not talking about okay. me. All right, and I don't know what we'll always talk about. All right. and I'm never at a do loss think, for words. Do you think that's something you need to work on? Yes. Okay. Yes, I, I do. Yeah, I think that you. I think you can go to. to so next time we do this, let's have two people or challenge me again. But we usually right. talk about me. <laughs> okay, so well, it's easy. This was talking about me and my problem, but it's okay. It's all. Oh, about you had nothing right. to do with it. All right, it's all, all right. about me. Love you, Richard. Thank you. I for love being you, here. Jay. I okay. do. I love you. Don't be alone.